You can also integrate your Nearpod lessons using your Google Slides that you've previously created. I know back in 2020, we created a lot of Google Slides, but now we can make these slides interactive and we can get the data from it in Nearpod. So let's take a look at this. I have a slideshow here of nouns. Um, here I am just going over or reviewing what nouns are and what they can be, and then my lesson is over. I give them an option here to sort um, the objects um, so that they can, you know, get the understanding of what a noun is. But at the same time that I'm doing this, am I getting an accurate reading of if the students know the difference between a noun, if they can categorize it as a person, place, or thing? So what I can do with my students is, as I'm going through the lesson, I can ask them questions. And this is something that we normally would do as a teacher, but I can also insert Nearpod to make it a little bit more engaging. So at the top of your uh, Google Slides, you have your menu here, and that menu has uh, all of the options that you need to edit your Google Slide. But if you go all the way over to your right, you see one that says Extensions. If we click on Extensions and bring it down, you will see an option for Nearpod, and it says Open Nearpod. This is where we would insert in our Nearpod lessons where we see fit so that they can, you know, take over with the engagement of the students. So, for example, um, this first slide says nouns are the name of a person, place, or thing. I may want to ask my students, you know, give me an example of people that can be nouns. Now, we do have a few here. We have a mom, Dr. Grandpa, your tia, cashier, or Spider-Man. I want to see if the students are aware that nouns can be people, so I'm going to go to my extensions, click on Nearpod, I'm going to open Nearpod here. Once I click on open Nearpod, you'll notice this menu will pop up over to your right, and it will give you some options of what you can insert into your Google Slide. So at this point, I want my students to be able to collaborate with each other, so I'm going to click on Collaborate Board. And I'm going to ask my questions. I'm going to say nouns can be people. And then my question is, what are some examples of nouns as people? And then once I do that, I can do several things. At the top, um, and we'll come back to the grid and the columns in just a moment, but at the top, I can do student options. With the student options, I can turn it off or on whether or not I want the students' names to be seen on their responses. I can turn it off or on whether I want the students to be able to edit responses. If this is something that I'm doing with the first, uh, first time with the class, I can choose to approve or just allow students to post. If I choose to approve student posts each time a student posts, it will not appear on the screen. I would have to manually approve it. The next is comments. Comments is what your students would leave for their classmates or what you can leave for them. If they're doing collaboration, especially if it's at a student pace, you may want to leave those comments on so that they can continue with the collaboration, even if they're working by themselves. And then this last button will allow you to approve or just allow the comments to um, pop up on the post that the students make. The next part that we have are the media types. So remember, we are trying to accommodate all of our students. So the question asks, nouns, uh, nouns can be people. What are some examples of nouns as people? Well, the students can have the option of inserting a picture to show a noun as a person, a video to show nouns as a person, record audio telling what a noun is as a person and giving an example or inserting a GIF. Um, some things you may want to turn off. And for example, if you didn't feel that a GIF was an option, if you look down here at the bottom, if I turn off GIF, that option will disappear. If I don't want to have videos, because it will take them a while to search those videos, again, here it's an option, but as soon as I turn it off, it is not. The only option that they have are to type in their responses, uh, use a picture example or to record their audio. Right here, you can give them an example or a stem to help them, um, you know, to prompt them to answer the question. You can also insert media or you can leave it blank. Once you're done with this part, you can click save 
and it will insert this portion into your Google Slides. So if you look over to your left, you will see where the collaboration board has been inserted. I can move it to where I want it to be, up, down. I can move it further down if I wanted to assess later. I can move it here. One thing about this is that um, when you're done, you are going to save it and it's going to go directly to Nearpod, but you can always go back and you can edit that slide if you wanted to add something else in. One of the activities that was included in here was sorting nouns by person, place, or thing. But remember, if they sorted here, you would still have to go back and check um, and you would still have to monitor their sorting. What we can do in Nearpod is we can add in another collaboration board, but with some extra features. So I'm going to click on collaboration board. And then I'm going to make it so that there are columns here. And you can also change the background so that it's different throughout. Um, it's getting very, very close to winter time. So maybe we want to do something that is a winter scene in the background. Do a fairy tale, nice spooky scene, a chalkboard, it's up to you. We're going to give our collaborate board a topic, and this is going to be called a noun sort. We're going to say for directions, sort the nouns by person, place, or thing. Now, in order for them to sort, we'll have to give them columns. So remember, we have these two options at the top. We have a grid and we have a column. When we put in our columns, our columns will appear here and you can add a column for each one. So we know our first column can be a person. Our next column can be a place. The last one can be a think. Okay, and so now the students are going to be able to take words or however you want to give it to them to, to do this information and sort them by person, place, or thing. At the bottom, again, you're going to give them the media types in which how they can respond. They can do it by images, videos, recorded audio, or GIFs. Whatever you don't want them to have as options down here, you can turn on or off. And then this button will give them the option of where they're going to place their answer. So we have three columns. And so if we click on the drop down, it gives them three options. So if they click on place, this is where they're able to type. It highlights. If they click on thing, it'll highlight thing. And this is where they're able to type. And if we type off person or people, it will give them the option to type here. And once we're done and we like the way that it looks, we're going to click on save. And then we can place this slide in where we see fit. And so here it is. So it's we'll the yellow collaborate board. We can put it before. We can put it after. We can start off with it to see if they actually know how to sort. So you're assessing the understanding prior to. Okay. Once we're done adding in any information that we need or anything that we wanted to add to our slide, we're going to save it and we're going to go to Nearpod. So we're going to click on Save and go to Nearpod. Nearpod will open in a new window. And you'll see that my lesson is here and it is saving each one of the slides. Once it has saved, it will automatically be in my library and I can view it as a lesson. And here it is here. It's given us a title, noun mini lesson. And if I click on it in a student pace mode or preview, I can see it. So let's click on it as a preview. So it will load here. And as a student, I can go through it. And the first thing it asks me to do is to sort nouns by person, place, or thing. I'm going to put in for a person, mom. 
And then if I wanted to switch my column to do a thing, I'm going to put thing and then I'm going to type in phone. And if I wanted to switch it to place, I'm going to switch my column to place. And type in house. Well, no, let's say McDonald's. My teacher gave me the option of doing pictures or audio visual. So if I wanted to do a picture, I can search here for um, um, a person, which is a doctor. A doctor. Oops, sorry. One more time. Doctor. Mm. I'm going to put him as a person. Um, if I wanted to record, I would click here. It's going to give me the option to record my audio for a thing. A thing is a fishing pole. Press the pause button, click save. Remember, they need to change their category to thing and press in and now my video recording i'm sorry my audio recording is here um the reason why we see the stars at the top is because the names of the students are off and once i finish with this activity i can go through it and now i'm getting ready for another question what are some examples of nouns as people and i can type it in here Then to my answer in. We can remove this one because we did that one before. And so now we can see how it's more interactive versus using it this way. And that's the end. So we've previewed it as a student. It's available right here to our students as well in a live mode and a student pace mode.